Hello, I'm presenting an overview of iCalendar FX. iCalendar FX is an open source iCalendar API written in Java. It implements all of the iCalendar specifications RFC 5545 and part of RFC 5546. This presentation assumes you are familiar with those specifications. iCalendar FX utilizes Java 8 features such as the New Date and Time API and Java 8 streams. Also, all properties are defined as JavaFX properties to provide easy binding to JavaFX graphical controls. A link to the source code for all the examples I will show here is found below. An iCalendar API has the following jobs. First and foremost, it stores calendar information, such as events and to-dos. It also guarantees that calendar elements are valid. For example, it ensures value types are correct and required elements are present. It maintains child-parent relationships. That means the API provides connections between related calendar elements. It provides functionality for repeating elements by the recurrence rule. It keeps track of special recurrences, which are elements with a recurrence ID. It allows sharing of calendar information by the methods in RFC 5546. These items will be discussed in greater detail as we move along. Calendar information is contained in various calendar elements. The elements are organized in a hierarchy as defined in RFC 5545, namely calendar, then component, followed by property, and then parameter. The calendar elements can be a parent, a child, or both. Parent elements include calendar, component, and property elements. In addition, the recurrence rule value, which is outside the normal hierarchy, is also a parent. All example, all elements except the calendar can be a child. This first example shows how to create an empty V calendar. All calendar elements can be created by using a no arg constructor. A V calendar is a top level calendar element. The to content method produces content text, just like what is shown in the iCalendar specification RFC 5545. All calendar elements have the to content method. When I execute this example, I get the content of an empty V calendar, which only contains the begin and end delimiters. There are three ways to add child elements to parents. First is by using setters. Second is by chaining, which is another type of setter that returns itself. Third is by parsing iCalendar content text. First, I'll talk about adding children with setters. These examples are specific for non-list children. This means the element is only permitted once in the parent object, such as the date, time, start property in a V event. All non-list children have four overloaded setter methods. The first option is the most explicit. It's to pass a reference of a new object. For example, I'll add a date, a date time start property to an event by creating a new date time start object. The second involves passing only the value the date time start object wraps. The third is parsing iCalendar content text. And lastly, the fourth is parsing the value portion of iCalendar content text. The last option is only available if the element has no children itself, such as a property with no param parameters. The last three setters are convenience methods that create new objects for you. Therefore, all four ways have the same end result. Some child elements can exist more than one time. These elements are contained in an observable list. The observable list can only be set one way, by assigning a reference. There are additional options for adding list-based children by using chaining, as you will soon see. Setting children by chaining is a convenient and efficient way to add them in mass. It can be done for list and non-list-based children. In this example, I create a new V event and add a number of properties one after another. The fourth chained element, the recurrence rule, is interesting because it itself has a number of child elements. As a part of the recurrence rule value, the with by rules is also interesting because it's list based and accepts a variable number of arguments, which is an example of the additional method to set list based children that I mentioned from the previous slide. Below is the output of the two content methods showing the built v events content text. Finally, the last way to build calendar elements is by parsing iCalendar content text. All calendar elements have a parse method. 
In this example, I have content text for a V calendar represented as a string. By running the static parse method, I create a new V calendar with all the properties and components taken from the content text. If I run the to content method, I see output that exactly matches the content that was parsed. In addition to parsing strings, as all calendar elements do, the V calendar also parses files and readers. iCalendarFX maintains parent child relationships. A list of child elements is automatically maintained by parents when children are added. The list is accessed by the children unmodifiable method. The order of the children in the list matches the order in which they were added to the parent. Also, children have a getParent method that returns a reference to its parent. Here is an example showing parent-child connections. First, I create a v-event by parsing iCalendar content text. I get its date-time start property because it's also a parent. I get the list of the v-event and date-time start properties children. <clears throat> Finally, I get the parent of the date-time start property. The output shows the four properties of the v-event <clears throat> and the one parameter of the date-time start property as their respective children. You can see the date time start property's parent, the V event. iCalendarFX can validate calendar elements to ensure they comply with the rules specified in RFC 5545. Some errors are caught immediately and an exception is thrown. For example, the value type of a date time end property must match the value type of a date time start property. An attempt to set date time end to an invalid type results in an exception. However, some errors can't be caught immediately. For example, a date time stamp property is required in a V event. However, a new V event doesn't have a date time stamp and it's allowed to be created without a thrown exception. So this kind of error is provided only when running the errors method, which returns a list of the errors messages. The isValid method returns a boolean, true if valid, false otherwise. All counter elements have the errors and isValid methods. This example, I have a V event with date time start and date time end properties. Both date time start and date time end are initially set to a local date value, which is called a date type. A local date time value is assigned to date time end, which is a date with local time type. Because that type doesn't match the date time start type, an exception is thrown and the old value is restored. In this example, I create an empty V event. A V event has some required properties. The errors list contains error messages describing the missing properties. Because there are errors, the isValid method returns false. iCalendarFX can process iCalendar transport independent interoperability protocol messages, also known as ITIP messages, as defined in RFC 5546. Built-in support is provided for publish, request, and cancel method types, as long as there are no attendees. Support for other, other method types can be added by the client by replacing the default ITIP factory and providing new classes to process the method types. In this example, I'm going to process a publish message. First, I create a main V calendar, which is empty. The publish message is represented by a string. The message is processed by calling the process ITIP message method. The method call also returns a string list containing a log of what occurred. When I run this example, you see the main V calendar now contains the V event from the published message, and the log shows the operation was successful. Some calendar components can be repeatable. The repeatability is defined by using the recurrence rule property. Java 8 streams is used to make the series of date time values. The stream recurrences method returns the stream. Stream recurrences has an argument that is a temporal, and temporal is the interface defined in Java 8 time that is implemented by classes such as local date, local date time, and zone date time. In this example, I define a recurrence rule that contains two elements, namely frequency and count. The stream recurrences method returns a stream which then has its values displayed to the console. There are 10 values one day after each other beginning at start. This next example shows the benefit of using Java 8 streams for an infinite series. Recurrence rules that do not specify a count or an until element are assumed to be infinite. 
Because Java 8 streams calculate values lazily, they handle an infinite series quite well. This recurrence rule defines days that are Friday the 13th and goes on forever. Without any limits, if I tried to output the results, the series would continue until it hit the max value for local date, and then, then throw an exception, around the year 1 billion. To avoid that problem, I limited the output to 5 of them. When I execute this test, you see the 5 Friday the 13th dates after January 1, 2016. All properties are based on JavaFX properties. JavaFX properties make it easy to bind two properties together to synchronize data, such as between a display control and application data. JavaFX properties also enable the easy attachment of listeners, another useful feature when developing graphical controls. This example shows how bindings can be used to synchronize data. I mocked application data by a summary property. I created a string property to mock to the display data from a JavaFX display control. Next, I bind the application data to the display data. When the display property is changed, the application data is automatically updated. In the output, you see the summary has changed to new summary, indicating the binding worked. This example shows how to att attach and fire listeners. I create a simple V event and add a date time start property. I attach a listener that will fire when the date time start property changes. I change the date time start in the last statement. When it runs, the listener fires and displays the message to the console. This concludes the overview of iCounter FX. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, there is much more to learn, so check out my other videos. Feel free to send me an email or make a comment below. Bye for now.